Today I want to share with you the 7 most common mistakes Blender beginners make. I work in a small studio where I had the chance to introduce Blender to the rest of my colleagues. Speaking with them and also hearing from you guys and, and sometimes people ask me questions directly on Instagram or whatever. I see a lot of common mistakes come back over and over again so I thought, hey, why not make a video about it and dive right into it right now. Viewport navigation and I don't mean just uh, turning around your uh, your scene, moving around. It can be difficult at the start, uh, but you get the hang of it pretty quickly. What I mean specifically is that there are two methods of zooming in. Uh, actually, one is called zooming in, of course, and the other one is dollying. To dolly means to move the camera forward or backwards on a track. Why is that important? I can hear you thinking. In most cases, it's sufficient to zoom into the view to get a closer look at something. However, you may notice that at a certain point you cannot zoom any closer. This is because Blender stores a viewpoint that is used for orbiting and zooming. It works well in many cases, but sometimes you want to move the viewport to a different place. This is what Dolly supports, allowing you to transport the viewport from one place to another. So either in this situation, I usually select everything and hit the period key or hit one object and hit the period key to fix that. So if you open your preferences, there you go. Uh, and you go to key map. In the 3D view, you can open up 3D view global and these are all your navigation settings and whatnot. Of course, your short keys for navigation can be different than mine, but what is important is that you locate your zoom, zoom view. And for me that shift control middle mouse and beneath that is dolly. And what that does is what I explained earlier. The way to avoid it is to use your dolly. So what I did is I set my dolly to control middle mouse and that's what I uh, usually used to zoom in or out. With that said, if I select for example this wall and now I use this instead, I can zoom in uh, while holding control and scrolling in or out and I can move freely through the scene. You see there's no limitation. Sometimes when you have that limitation though and you want to pan around your scene, it gets slowed down as well or maybe orbit. What you can do then is go back to preferences, open it up and switch back to navigation. In this panel you should enable depth this will improve the view pen rotate and zoom functionality so i don't know why you shouldn't enable that anyway with that enabled you should be able to zoom in and out better without any restrictions basically what i suggest is you go to the preferences look at what you use for a short key for a zoom view and look what your short key is for dolly view and then set it accordingly to what your preference is and that should fix your problem and have you ever experienced just accidentally hitting a key and everything in your scene or, or almost everything in your scene disappears? Well, those are the remnants of what used to be layers in Blender back in 2.7. So one, two, three, up to nine are short keys for corresponding layers. Even now when we have collections. If you ask me, they made it redundant since the collections make everything so much more user friendly in the outliner. So I chose to delete those short keys. So basically I have now nine more slots for short keys that I can fill up with short keys that I find more useful. So that's a two in one tip there for you. One of the many things I like in Blender is the ability to shift around your workspace and create whatever layout you want. But in there lies a pitfall for beginners. As you can see in this scene or in the scene right here, I use different layouts. Going back to the other one, splitting off a window is done dragging on the corner. But beginners usually are not familiar with that functionality and don't know which way to drag and they end up eventually with screens that are, and they end up with screens that look like this. I saw many, many beginners that struggle with this. And that makes sense because it can sometimes be hard to drag the right corner and drag it in the right direction and get the right functionality out of it. You see, I just joined one instead of splitting it. So what I suggest you do instead when you want to split off a screen is go to the border, right click and say vertical split, horizontal split, 
So vertical split is like this. And of course, a horizontal split is like this. You see the line hovering over your screen right there and click in will apply it. Now I got even more screens, yay. Uh, on the other hand, you can go in here and say join and join them up. So join, right click. Um, I have to probably join these. See, you can join left or right. And let's quickly work back to a more decent uh, workspace. Lastly, we're almost there. We're back in business. There you go. One step further, even what you can do if you want. So for example, you can use the free slots that you created from the previous step and fill them up with short keys for splitting and joining, right? So for example, I can right click on this and say, make a short key and I select one, for example, now it's one. Unfortunately, this doesn't create uh, exactly what we want. If you go to the preferences, it creates a short key right in the key map section. Unfortunately, it should be in screen editing. Right now it is uh, window dependent. You see it only works when I hover in this window and then I move over here, that's possible. Uh, but when I start here and I press one, it doesn't do anything, right? So let's head back to the preferences tab and it should be right in here, but it is probably in screen global. I'm not sure about that. So I'm going to look it up by using key binding. I'm saying I'm pressing one. And while I press one, this list comes up with everything that has a key binding with one or a combination of an alteration key and one. So on, on top here in screen, uh, you see split area, we can drop it down and there is screen dot area underscore split. We need to copy that. And um, ba, 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 ba. see it's set to horizontal. We have to keep that in mind and set to one. We can delete this now. Go back to names and get rid of one because we don't need that filtered. And in screen, screen editing, you can add a new one. Unfold this key binding that is called none and replace it with screen area split. Then choose horizontal so it's now not uh, so it's now not grayed out anymore. And instead of A, we want to use one. And if I can get out of this, you can see it now works here, but also it works right here or it works right here. So that's a difference. We can do the same thing one more time. Vertical split, for example, but we could also just go into preferences, open it up on the other screen and say, after I copy this one, add a new one, unfold it, paste it in, say vertical split and use for example two. So now we can vertical split in here, in here, in here. Um, unfortunately, joining an area doesn't work quite yet. So I'm sorry I didn't get it working. If someone knows how to get that working, please leave it down below in the comments. Uh, I will include it as well in the description or pin your comment, but it would be very useful because I really like uh, working like this. A quick note, uh, setting these to one, two or three might not be the best case. So you probably should uh, start with four and five because one, two and three are taken in edit mode and these will override those in edit mode. So you won't be able to use one to select your vertex mode or three to enter your polygon mode. Uh, so four and five are safe bets in my opinion. And you can use one, and one two and three for different short keys in different windows where they are window specific, if that makes sense. So yeah, this one is for the modelers. So I created a scene with a plane and uh, we have a scene right here. I extrude something with E and bevel it. So we have a cube with some segments. Uh, now in vertex mode, sometimes you want to connect these two. And what I see a lot of beginners do is they, had, uh, they press F and then they think, oh, well, this is connected right now. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. See, if I go to polygon mode uh, using three, this is still one polygon. You see, it selects the whole thing. Whereas if I select this, it doesn't select the whole row, you see? 
see what I mean? Let's say if I subdivide this first, you can see there's now a polygon and I can drag it up. There you go. Undo that. If I dissolve this, uh, or delete this, I'm sorry, you want to say, select these vertices and hit J. And now when I select these polygons, you see that they are split, right? It no longer selects the whole thing. So that's the way you go about it. Uh, on the other hand, if you, for example, still have that, if you, for example, did do this uh, throughout your mesh, and I'm just selecting vertices and, and pressing F to fill these polygons, let's say you have done this and you want to fix it, you go back to, uh, you deselect everything. Unfortunately, you have to be in edge mode, select all by trade, lose geometry, and there you go. Now I can say delete these edges, sorry, delete these edges, and we're back in business. Moving on to the next one, this is a similar problem as the previous one, so we stay in this scene, uh, because I can quite clearly indicate what's happening. If I go into polygon mode, uh, and in wireframe mode as well, you see that these are polygons. Uh, and sometimes, I have done this pl plenty of times, uh, you select a loop edge, loop edge, <laughs> you select the edge loop, and you accidentally press F. Now it seems like nothing has happened, uh, and that is because you just created a polygon on the inside. Now this shouldn't be that much of a problem in this case, but in larger and complexer models, this could lead to some shading artifacts or issues with the subdivision modifier, for example. Uh, overall, you just don't want this, right? So keep that in mind check your mesh on the interior as well. Um, for this instance, it's quite easy. You could just um, delete the face, but say you have done this multiple times, and now we got a bunch of polygons in the middle that we don't want, of course. Similar to the previous step, we go to select, uh, select by trade, and this time we choose interior faces. Now it's selected all the interior faces, and if we press X for delete, you can go to faces, delete faces. And that should fix the problem. So the next two are a bit more common mistakes I see among beginner animators. So this is a replica of a GoPro Karma drone. I had this one, recently sold it again. A good thing in Blender is that almost everything is keyable. With that I mean every aspect here, say checkboxes, um, channels like position, for in this case focal length, uh, rotation, scale, those are all keyframable using I, right? And with that comes the possibility to keyframe the visibility. So for example, you want to hide a certain object or a part of an object. Let's say I want to select the wings, the back wings of this one, and at this point in time, I want them not seen in the viewport. I go further in time and frame 31, we say, now I want to see them. Right here in our viewport, when it hits 31, we see them appear. And you can go ahead and animate the whole scene using this and see a nice result in your viewport. But the common mistake here is that animators forget that this is just a viewport display. If you use this method, it can be handy from time to time, so I suggest you do. And you have to do the same thing for your renderability. That is the icon right next to it. Otherwise, if I go to frame anything between frame 1 and 31, and I press render, you can see that the back wings are still there. So what you have to do instead is go to the wings, the renderability turn off as well, go to frame 31 I believe, and there you can place it on, and now, if I render it again, you see they're gone. Uh, once again, it's a small mistake, but it's one that you can make easily, uh, so keep mind of that, and it will save you some time in render, because if you have to render frame 1 to 31 over again, because you did see an object that you shouldn't have seen, after a few times, I can tell you, that will get kind of painful. One thing I do for clients is I do like, sort of assembly videos for technical models or uh, exploded views, imploded views, 
if that is even a thing, I don't know. <laughs> Let's say I want to animate the position of this drone, right? On frame one, we want it to be starting from somewhere here, I don't know, or let's move it up a bit, right? And keyframe that. And now we want to go, say to 20 frames, 30 frames in, and we want to bring it back, right? Okay, but where was it exactly? Um, we can try and line it up by eye, right? But yeah, what is, the, what is the height we need to use? And maybe I was pretty close with this. And you can say that's acceptable, I'm willing to do it uh, and keyframe it because the animation is working. However, if this really is a technical drawing and your clients are a bit more precise and want from you an accurate representation of their model, you have to be pixel perfect, right? So <laughs> uh, with that in mind, the best way to do it is actually uh, go back in time and grab your objects and apply their location. Now, you can apply their location. This will mean that the origin snaps back to the origin of the world. That's fine. Uh, the main point is that this is set to zero. On the other hand, if you want it to be at the center point or the pivot point that you selected by hand, or maybe that's more convenient for something you have to do later on for a certain rotation, uh, that can still be done. So I move back in time, Control Z, and I say, for example, let's say I want it to be completely in the middle, right? Because that's a nice pivot point for this object. I say set origin to cursor. And there you go. Now it rotates around that point. That's perfect. But this is now set to a very odd number that I never can remember when I have to animate it back into position. So uh, we're not going to use apply location because that will set it back, like I said, to the origin of the world. So control Z again and use this time location to deltas. Now, what this is, uh, what this has done is it kept the location of the pivot point um, and still applied the location settings right here. If you move to the object tab on the right, you can go to transform. If it isn't on fold already, do so. Then you have location still, everything's set to zero. Uh, just like this is right here, it's the same panel. That makes sense. And underneath there is delta transformations. And there you have your previous set location. This is, where, this is how you get your origin at the pivot point you need it to be and still have a clean location. Um, to demonstrate, if I now go up and say location keyframes, move back move forward in time like 30 frames, I can just easily press Alt G. It snaps back into place to its rest position and locate and locate and keyframe the location. <laughs> um, and we still have the same animation, but now we know that it's perfectly in the right spot. And these can be out of here and these two can be out of there. And select them again and keyframe the location. Now snap them back into place. There you go. And for good measure, move this about there. Right. I've done it in like what? A couple of minutes. <laughs> uh, and that's all because I could easily snap back to my rest position. So for beginner animators, keep that in mind. It's a quite useful trick and it can save you in so many occasions. And with that, I conclude my seven most common Blender beginner mistakes. I hope you learned something. If you did, leave a like down below. Leave a comment down below if you know some more common mistakes Blender users make. If you want to see more content in the future, subscribe to the channel. You might also like these other videos. As always, stay creative. I'll see you next time. Ciao.